Hello, hello, welcome everyone. This is the next session in our Inspiring Money Stories uh, segments. And I have a super special guest today. I'm so excited. We have Jennifer Dent Brown today. She is someone that I have worked with before. She is a former coach of mine and she's an amazing coach because I've had that personal experience. So I'm really, really happy to have her here today. So Jennifer, for people who don't know you, don't know your work yet, can you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, how far back do you want me to go? Well, <laughs> we're talking about money and weight, so, okay. you know. Talk yeah. about money and weight. So I'm yeah. Jennifer Dent Brown. Thank you, Carrie, for inviting me to have this conversation. Two of my very favorite topics to talk about. I struggle with money and I struggle with weight. And what I have figured out is it's a mindset. It's a mindset and how we do one thing is how we do everything. And so if you find yourself overeating emotionally, chances are you're emotionally overspending as well. And you have some thoughts about money that aren't helpful. So I am a coach. I'm a certified health, life and weight loss coach. And I help frustrated dieters learn how to stop dieting forever. That's it. I teach people how to lose weight for the last time. I've been a full-time coach since 2020, and I have been coaching since 2014, and I absolutely love it. This is like my life's work. This is my passion, and most recently, I have been, I've always been intrigued with money as it relates to weight, but most recently, I've been kind of like talking more about it, and so when this opportunity came up, I was like, yes. Let's absolutely talk about it. Sorry. I was so happy when I got your message and I was like, oh, yes. And especially the topic of weight and money, because as many of you in here know, I'm a, I am used to uh, coach weight loss and now I've transitioned over to money mindset and manifestation. And um, I notice a lot of patterns with myself and a lot of clients as well. Although not all clients, but a good, a good number of people, if they had financial stress, they also had overeating stuff going on. It was very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, what have you noticed about that, that connection then? Well, what I noticed first was with me. Uh, um, I always struggled with my, well, I'd say always struggle with my weight. I started struggling with my weight when I went to college mm. and gained the freshman 15 and just kept gaining weight. But I would always like be on a diet trying to lose the weight. Um, so I was very much a yo-yo dieter and that was my identity for like 20 years, two decades. I was always on a diet. I was either on a diet, quitting a diet or getting ready to start one. And I had like this, this maximum set point. I could never lose more than seven pounds. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know what it was about. Like I could, I guess my willpower expired at seven. And I would always lose seven pounds and then I would like get stuck. And then I'm like, I'm doing all the things and it's not working. But really, I wasn't being honest with myself because I would start hanging out a little bit more. I, I would get comfortable like, oh, I lost some weight. I would eat a little bit more. I would drink a little more cocktails. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, the diet's not working. And I would not acknowledge within myself that, hey, like I'm not keeping it real. I'm eating. Hence, the weight is coming back on. So I was like, oh, that diet doesn't work. Let me go find another one. And it was almost like this, um, I was in this cycle of like, let me just find this new, bright, shiny object, this diet that I could focus on. Because with the new diet came the excitement. It came the, 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 the dopamine hit of like, oh, yeah. I can look like these people in the after pictures if I do exactly what they did. And so I would throw myself into the whole process of like preparing for a diet. I would buy all the supplies. I would get new workout clothes. I would get all the supplements, anything that I needed to be quote unquote successful. I would spend money to buy it. And so this was just my pattern year after year after year after year. So finally, when I figured out the weight thing, and I recognized that it was not the diet that was going to help me lose the weight. I had to change my mindset first. I had to change my relationship with food. I had to change the way I thought about myself. Like I did that work first and then the weight started to come off. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, mm -hmm. I got the weight under control, but then I started spending, well actually was, I was already a spender. 
I was already a secret mm -hmm. vendor. And because I had a good job, I always had good income. I had a high credit score. I had the house. Like, I didn't have any issues getting credit. And it was almost like my self-worth with money was attached to credit. And I don't know. Do you guys have use a credit system in, um, in the UK? Yeah, okay. yeah we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I had all, access to all the credit cards and all the things. And so I felt like when I wanted that dopamine hit, when I wanted to feel good, because I, had, I lost the weight. I wasn't yeah. looking for a diet to like give me that high. I would buy stuff. And so I racked up a lot of credit card debt. I had a little bit of student loan debt. Um, I became an, I lost my job. That was one thing. I lost my job. I got, I got laid off and I became an entrepreneur. My first business was as an event planner. Mm -hmm. And because I was so used to this lifestyle, like I was make, already making six figures. I was like, oh, let's just keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was um, creating that lifestyle on credit. Mm. So I was racking up all this credit. I had no idea how to run a business. I liked to throw parties and events. That was fun. I didn't know what to charge people. I had to start paying people to help me at events. I had no idea. I was spending more money than I was actually bringing in. No clue. Right. I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't know how to run a business. And yeah. so that business created a whole lot more debt. And then... I took out a, a loan to invest in a what I now know was a pon was a Ponzi scheme. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a whole nother story. I met these yeah. people. She promised me the world. She was like, "Oh, this business, like, just you know, give us this money, and we'll give you a really high return." And for a couple of months, I was getting a really high return. I would give them like five hundred dollars. They would send me back like eight hundred, nine hundred, in like less than two weeks. And so it was great. And then I was like, oh, let me go get some more money <laughs> to yeah. give to them. Yeah. And then the, the check stopped. Like I stopped getting the money. So fast forward, mm. they were arrested federal. They went to federal prison for fraud. They were um, convicted of mail fraud. And I got to testify. I never got all of my money back. I got some of it back. But I had racked up over $200,000 of debt in that period yeah I was gonna ask how much did you get to then with the business and yeah thirty six thousand dollars in debt right yeah to be exact wow so it was at that point where I was like broke I had very little money coming in um I had all of these bills I had all of these like creditors um at that at that time I was living in an, in an apartment I had a house but I was renting it out because I wanted to live in the city mm -hmm. Um, even that money, the rental income, like wasn't enough right. to pay that mortgage and to help me. So I was kind of like very destitute, like I'm going to lose my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember like having a meltdown on the carpet. I had a beautiful loft looking out over the city. And I was like, God, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like help me. And I ended up at in the bookstore, because I didn't have any money to go shopping. That was what I used to do for fun. I didn't have money to go hang out with my friends. I used to go to the bookstore. That was my entertainment. So I go to the bookstore and on the table, there was this book, like a bunch of finance books. And on the table, it was money, money. I forgot the name of it. It was a Dave Ramsey book. Okay. Um, I forget the name of it. Money makeover or whatever. Mm-hmm. I couldn't afford to buy the book, but I just read it. Like I sat in the store and I read it. I was like, oh, here's a website. Went home, got on the website, and I like fell into that whole process. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dave Ramsey, but... A little bit. Yeah, yeah. If your people are in the U.S., chances are that you've heard of him. He's like, I don't know, multi, multi, multi-millionaire. He's made a lot of money teaching people how to get out of debt, but it's very... Like there's no mindset change. It's all very like, do this, don't do this. He calls it beans and rice. So basically the equivalent of dieting is like restricting everything. Mm -hmm. Like eating, drinking nothing but water and eating salads and, 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 and grilled chicken, right? Mm -hmm. In order to lose weight. His process is he calls it beans and rice, but you like cut everything out. You don't do anything. You don't spend any money except for your basics. Mm. So I did that. 
And because I was practicing in the dieting world, I had willpower, I could do that. I did that for like for two years. And I paid off all that debt in wow. less than two years. I paid off all that debt in less than two years. Now I had to go back to work. I had to get actually I had two jobs, I had two corporate jobs, and I worked a part-time job at Victoria's wow. Secret <laughs> on the weekends. Um, but I was very focused on getting out of that debt. So I restricted, 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 just like with weight loss, right? Mm-hmm. In order to pay off the debt. But the same thing happened that used to happen with me when I lost weight. I would get tired of the restriction. Yeah. And I would start eating again. And I remember the moment, Carrie, I had paid off all the debt. I had paid off my car lease. I remember I paid $13,000. I bought my car. Like I was living the life. I should have been like ecstatic. And I remember all I wanted to do was go to the mall and just spend whatever I want. Right. I didn't want to use this envelope. I didn't want to budget for this store. I just wanted to go to the mall and plop down my debit card and just buy what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. (laughs) Okay. So you had a bit of a rebound. Yeah. (laughs) I had a rebound and I found it was very, like I didn't rack up all that debt again, but I found it was very difficult to maintain that lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when I got married, my husband was like, no, we are not following. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and that was like a whole nother conversation. I don't know if you talked about like marriage and money, but that was something like we're still struggling with. Yeah. We, we have different money styles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I noticed that same pattern of like my thoughts about restriction and food. Oh, I just need to restrict spending so I can like save all this money. Mm. But then what was I going to do with all the money that I was saving? And then I was like hoarding the money that I saved because I didn't want to let it go. Yeah. There's that whole scarcity piece that comes in. It's like, it feels like there's not enough. And if I let it go, mm-hmm. it might not work. Yeah. And it's yeah. that fear, right? The same thing with like eating, you lose the weight, then you're scared to eat anything. You're like, oh my God, if I eat, like, if I taste this cupcake, I'm going to gain 10 pounds immediately. And you become mm-hmm. scared of food. So yeah. what i I teach my clients now is like our goal is to obtain food freedom. Mm. I have a weekly newsletter. You guys are welcome to join my list to get on it. It's called food freedom. Every week I send out a newsletter with different like things, mindset shifts and things that you can do to achieve food freedom. I don't want anyone to be afraid of eating just like I don't want anyone to be afraid of spending or saving. Absolutely. Same thing. I'm on this newsletter, by the way, and it's great. You should definitely oh. sign up. We'll put a link underneath it. I do. I still get your newsletters. Yeah. 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 I have fun putting that out. It's like one of the things I actually enjoy to do on the week on the weekends to sit, to sit down and create that. And I'm like, what do y'all need definitely. to hear from me? Definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like you've you've come like way beyond where you were at before in terms of food and weight because you've you know created food freedom for yourself and now you teach that to other people. So. What happened with the money piece then? If you notice similar patterns going on there and it was all kind of binging and restricting, if you like, in the money world. Where the money world? Come? I can't say that I have reached food freedom. Like I haven't reached money freedom yet, but I'm working on it. And this has yeah. been like my focus for the past oh, two years, maybe. But the interesting thing was the debt that I had racked up, um, Back in that was 2011, I think, like 2012. It was a personal debt, right? I had it like it was all just like whatever, vacations, clothes. And then I found myself in a successful coaching business making six figures in 2020. And I didn't have the right mindset to to learn to know how to use that, leverage it properly, mm-hmm. and pay it off. So I found myself starting to rack up debt in my business because in business, it's a little bit like more accepted than just like, oh, you're going to put your vacation on a credit card. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do that? Yeah. But in business, it's like, oh, you're investing in yourself. You're getting your ROI. And I totally believe that 100%. Yeah. However, there needs to be a plan in place, a strategy of like, how am I going to create the money that I'm creating from this investment? How is that going to go back into the business? Yeah. 
And that's when my manifestation skills started to like come alive. <laughs> nice. And well, and what? Well, that's how I realized there's the, the energy in money. Mm -hmm. So just like as I was learning how to build a business, learning how to build a six figure coaching business, I learned that there's energy in what you put out. There's energy in your posts. There's energy that you create in your emails. There's energy. People are energetically, your clients are energetically attracted to you. Yeah. And so my job as a coach in growing a business is to was to make sure that energetically I was aligned with my goal and my vision. Mm, so the clients okay. were coming, the money was coming, the clients were coming, the money was coming. I was not yet at that time. I didn't learn how to be energetically aligned with the money. So the money would come in and it would go right back out again. Yes. It would go. I'm like, oh, there's another mastermind. Such I a common one, I think, yeah. isn't it? Such a common one for so many people. Yeah, it's like, oh, there's another investment. Oh, there's another course I want to buy. Exactly. There's another like exactly. thing. And I found myself, and this is what, what is this, 2023? Like, yeah, last year, like the, a little bit of the year before last, I found myself like starting to use my business to buy personal stuff. I had a CFO and everything. I had someone helping me with okay. my money. So that was the first mistake. I love my CFO. Yeah. She's great, but I didn't know how to use her. I was using her to avoid looking at my money situation versus using her strategically. So just like when yeah. we're overeating and we have our head in the sand and we're like just eating mindlessly and we're just eating all the things, it was kind of the same thing with the business, right? I was very good at like creating the money. I had my little spreadsheet. Yeah. And when my client payments were coming in, I knew how much money I was making that month. Like I had all of that down. What I wasn't paying attention to was what I was spending. It was on a credit card. It was on my business mm. credit card. And anytime mm -hmm. I saw something on Amazon, like, oh, I need this business credit card. Oh, I should, I should get this. My business needs this business credit card. Oh, I've got to go to this event. I need to buy new clothes. Business credit card. Mm. And my CFO mm -hmm. was like, yeah, that's a business expense. She was, she's not a, like a money coach. She wasn't coaching me on my money mindset. She was just looking at like my cash flow and helping yeah. me like from that perspective. So it just allowed me a chance to like not focus on my money. So as we know, like we can't keep going in that trajectory without like the bottom falling out eventually. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah. More money is going to be going out than coming in. And so that's what happened. And carry it. And it was like, and the end of last year, like maybe quarter three of last year, I was like, oh, something's wrong with my business. Mm -hmm. I need to change my business. And I like stopped doing, I had already stopped doing one on one coaching at the time, but I was like, let me stop doing one on one coaching and like throw all of my energy into rebuilding my business. And I created this membership. My process was still the same, but the mem like the, the model was different. Yeah. I broke down, like I burned down what was working because in my mind, I was like, oh, it's not bringing in enough money. Right. Let me burn everything down, change the seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and create a new business model. And I did that. And guess what happened? Same thing again. Same thing. The money Same wasn't thing. coming. It wasn't enough money. Mm -hmm. I'm still spending yes. with the hopes of like, oh, this new business model is going to work. Right. And it didn't work to the expectation that I need uh, that I needed it to. Yeah. To cover what was going out. Interesting. Interesting. So and do you think it's purely the mindset? Do you think it's because you basically imported the same level of thinking and belief into mm -hmm. that new model? Yeah, I didn't create any new thoughts about money. I didn't create any new thoughts as a CEO and a business owner in money. Yeah. I was just kind of like looking around. So what happens is if you, if you aren't if you are not intentional about creating new new thoughts about money and your relationship with money, just like with food, you're going to default to your 1.0 brain. You're going to default to your old way of thinking. So in order for me, like when I lost the weight, I had to literally recreate my mindset around my relationship with food, my body image, my weight, the number on the scale. Like I had to reinvent my brain around all of those things, which is what I teach my clients. 
Yeah. It's a very top down approach. We change our brains and our bodies change as a result. Absolutely. But I didn't do that as a CEO. I didn't know how to like run a business in that way. And I outsourced that mindset to someone else who had like no background of like my, my beliefs. And she didn't know like my money bring like how I was raised around money and my experience with money. She didn't know my money stories. No, no, no. interesting interesting so your where did you come to with all of that then because you had one business model you tried a new business model the same thing basically happened so where are you with it all now then my energy like my confidence tanked because the money wasn't coming in like it wasn't money was coming in but it wasn't enough right to cover and I just kind of like flailed for about three months and that was like one of the lowest points of my business Mm. And that's when I had to like, that's when I learned the energy of money. And I was like, okay, something's got to change here. Like, I don't know, but what I'm doing is like not working. So I knew it was something that had to do with my mindset. So I started seeking coaches who who taught money mindset. Mm. Um, I started working with a coach in a group. Um, Can I say who it is? Is Yeah, of course. Go for it. So in the boom, boom room. Yeah. Yeah. Because I needed to be in that energy of money. I needed to hear someone else's thoughts about money because I couldn't come up with them on my own. Yes. That's the biggest thing I learned from her was how to think about money. And we like I started every day like thinking different thoughts, like intentionally thinking about um, money and also being very intentional about my gratitude. Mm. So... Once I like got into that process, I was like, okay, I still need to figure out how to manage my money as a entrepreneur where your income is variable. Like it changes from month to month to month. I need to figure out, like, I still got bills to pay. I have like a, a, a household to contribute to. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I do that? And I discovered Gina Knox, who is a coach. She runs Six Figure Saver. Mm. teaches entrepreneurs how to deal with a variable income to save 100k in 12 months blew my mind completely different money process i was a money management it's like the the action of the money right so i had the energetic piece i was working on my thoughts about money and then it was like now i have a very actionable strategy of like what to do when the money comes in where to put it and how to handle it when the ebbs and flows of money from month to month Amazing. Yeah. And then when I got to that place, I was like, I felt much more confident in what I was selling. And I went back to what felt good to me energetically. Mm -hmm. I never liked having a membership. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I I did not like having a membership. I thought that's what I should do because all weight loss programs are memberships and pay month to month. Yeah. But I like my clients like you and like some Mm. of my other clients, like once you're my client, you're always my client. Yeah. You're always my client. And before I burned everything down, I had a lifetime access group weight loss program. Mm. And what I found the benefits of doing that is like, yep, you are here. You lose the weight, but life gets lifey. You can go off, do your thing. And if something happens, you have a new circumstance, the weight begins to come back. You always have a place to come back to. Yes. Yeah. As a lifetime member, you always have a place to come back to. Yeah. And that like that, even now it gives me chills. Like that energetically feels good to me. I don't care what everyone else does. I don't care what the industry thinks. Weight loss needs to be a subscription. I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I went back to that. I now have my group program is lifetime access. Pay once. You're in it forever. And now I felt like I can just throw my heart and my soul into this group. (laughs) Yes. Do all the things. We just finished a 30 day stay on track for summer challenge. It was great. They got so much out of it. And so that is like energetically, it just feels good to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in alignment now. It will all start flowing when you're in alignment. I'm in alignment. And I love one-on-one coaching. Mm. The industry says, coaching industry is like, you know, throw all your energy into the group, grow your group. Yep. I still like having a bunch of like one-on-one clients, a handful of one-on-one. Now, do I want 
22, which is what I had at my height. No, Mm -hmm. but five, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I have amazing, I have five amazing clients that I coach one-on-one. I have my group. Everything just feels better. That's good. Yeah. It feels better to me because I'm in alignment. And now I can focus on energetically what I call Serena calls opening up the abundance portal. (laughs) Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Bringing more in, having the capacity to handle more. Exactly. Because you've got your container there and it feels good and it feels right. Everything feels right. Yeah. Yeah. My thoughts about hiring and hiring help, because for a long time I was in that scarcity mindset. I was like, I got to do everything. I fired everybody, all my contractors. The only person I kept was my podcast manager. Right. But I was like, I got to do everything myself. I got to hold on to this money. I got it. That was my like Dave Ramsey mindset of like, let me cut all my expenses and do all this stuff on your own. Well, Carrie, I ended up in the ER. <laughs> oh my God, really? At the beginning of this, yeah. Ser- I just had a, like, it was a panic attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was so stressed out about money, but I thought it was a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Husband yeah. takes me to the ER and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Like, scary, scary. Yeah. So it just so shows like, like how important it is to manage this stress and to find the right way for you and to stay in alignment with what really works you the stress management is staying in alignment yes right because I was holding on so tight like I was so focused on not enough like this isn't enough like a client would come in this isn't enough this isn't that's when I had to like let go yeah to learn to let go so Serena helped me do that in the boom boom room um Gina taught me the unbothered energy which I love it's like this Mm -hmm. energy of so what I learned with her is at that time, I looked at my bank account. This is really a good exercise for anyone who's struggling with lack mm. and like feeling like you don't have enough. So I got the homework of looking at my bank account every single day. My bank account balanced, no matter whether it was in the positive or the negative, whether I had four dollars in there or four hundred or four thousand. Yeah, it was a C. Same mm-hmm. thing I do with my weight loss clients, Carrie. Yep. Right. I put that number in my account, all of the numbers I had in my business account. It was a C in the morning. I wrote down all of my thoughts about that. How am I feeling about this money? What is what are my thoughts? What is what is my feeling? And then I decided how I wanted to feel about it. Yes. So for anyone who's not familiar with the model. So what we're talking about here is looking at the world around you, look at the looking at the external world. And in this scenario, we're talking about the bank account and we're talking about the numbers in the bank account and then transposing that to what do I think about that and really seeing how your brain reacts to that situation. Mm -hmm. Super powerful exercise, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I did that every single day until I got to what Gina calls unbothered energy. Nice. Right. So I was able to look at my bank account, no matter what the number is. And say, oh, I'm unbothered about it, which is the same thing yeah. I teach my weight loss clients. Very similar to what we do with weight loss, right? Because so many people are bothered about getting on the scales and they're scared exactly. and they freak out mm-hmm. about the number. And eventually you get to a point where you're just like, whatever, it's fine, you know? Because you know you have number. control over your results. Yeah. So I needed yeah. to get to the place, the same thing of like, I see the number on the scale. I was like, whatever, it's just data. It's a data point. I need yeah. to look. I needed to be able to look at my bank account and not like have this flood of emotions, negative emotions. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> and so I did that work every single day until I got to like, oh, look at that. I got $25 in my account. It's amazing. What a great <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So getting in that energy of gratitude and just realizing like, even if it's just $25, it's still amazing. Yeah. 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 And also remembering that I am good at creating money. Like I yes. can create clients. I can create cash. Like yeah. I am in service. Like what I do is in service to people. There is a value in that. I can create the cash as long as my brain is on board with keeping the abundance portal open. Absolutely. Absolutely. The minute I'm like, it's not working. Nothing is happening. Something is wrong. Just like with the diet, right? When I got to my seven pound loss. Yeah. If I say the same thing and my account has like seven hundred dollars in it, and I'm like, oh my God, it's not working, something is happening, something is wrong, I'm out of alignment. Yes. And so then it's like, what do I need to do to bring myself up the emotional scales? So I started listening to Abraham Hicks. Mm-hmm. Um I got uh Amanda Francis's audiobook, it was recommended oh, to me. Yes. I just yes. started 
practicing very intentionally what it feels like yes. throughout the day, no matter what's happening, to be abundant. Yes. What it feels like to, to feel abundant. And when my brain started to freak out of like, it's not enough, people aren't coming, nobody, like when I, my brain started to freak out, I would just tell myself, things are always working out for me. Things mm -hmm. are always working out. No matter what's happening right now, things are always working out for me. Mm -hmm. And I literally like, that was my main focus. Mm -hmm. For a great mantra. Yeah. Like, two months. That was my main focus. Yeah. And so um, when I had a launch, I relaunched my lifetime access group. Right? Mm -hmm. For the first, I re reintroduced it. That was in May. And I had been working on my money mindset for like January and February. I think I joined the Boom Boom Room at the end of last year. So I think that was like November time frame. Mm -hmm. And that was October because then I joined Six Figure Saver in like December. So I've been working on my money thoughts very, very consistently. I think I picked up um, Rich AF, Amanda's book. Uh, yes. Like yep. February. So I started and I started listening to Abraham in like the February, March time frame. Nice. When yeah. my launch rolled around in May. Actually, it's so funny. I was just looking at my numbers. In February, I created $4,000. 4000 yes. That was it. Yep. Like yep. That was probably the lowest amount of money I've ever made as a full-time coach. $4,000. Yeah. Um. Actually, I should probably give you the exact numbers. But by May, which was the launch, I had created a 45K month. Amazing. Amazing. And do you attribute some of that then to yes. post mindset work? Oh, absolutely. Yes. When I joined the Boom Boom Room, Serena gave me the, the uh, thought of like, I'm a 50K in one month coach. Yeah. I'm a 50K in one month coach. I'm a 50K plus a month coach. Yes. And she's like, nope, you don't believe it. Your brain doesn't believe it. Your nervous system doesn't believe it. But let's just keep practicing it and see what happens. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that was her process, right? That's how she created millions. That yeah. was her process. She's like, just keep repeating that, practicing that intention. Get your nervous system used to having 50K. And here's the funny thing, Carrie. Like, as I was going through the launch and I had these goals, I didn't even see the bigger number. Mm. I didn't see it at all. No. I created that month because I also picked up some one-on-one -on -one clients and I also created some group member clients. So it was like 24K, 25K cash that month. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. I have like a 25K a month. Like that's yeah. great. Yeah. And then my friend was like, Well, how much did you make in sales? I was like, what do you mean? She's a business coach. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. She's like, how much money did you make in sales? If you add up all of the like payments over the months and all the things, like how much did you make? And I calculated it and I was like, oh shit. I was like, it's that's a 45 k month. Day. Yeah. And then I was like, I am a 50K a one month coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I call that counting all the chickens. Because I that's something that I used to do was only count the cash in bank. You know, well, this is what's arrived. So this is what I know is here. Yeah. And I was, in some respects, energetically blocking what was already in the escrow. I like to think of the sales as that's the energetic escrow that's been promised. Even if people don't, you know, default on the payment plan, even if they decide, actually, I don't want to go through with that after all, you know, whatever happens, mm -hmm. I like to think that that's been promised and it's going to come some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to come via that actual person, although that would be amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we see, wow, that is way more abundant than I actually ever thought was going it on right now. So much, more yeah. so much more, so much more. So if we look at that comparison to like weight yeah. loss, counting the chickens when it comes to our money, of like, yeah. you know, I've only received this much with weight loss. Losing weight is really a holistic, like it's a holistic change to your lifestyle. Yeah. It's not just what you're putting into your mouth. It's like, how are you managing your stress? It's yeah. how you are interacting with your relationships with people. It's how are you moving, choosing to move your body every day. It's like this holistic approach mm -hmm. to create your mm -hmm. goal weight. But counting chickens with weight loss is like, well, I only ate 1200 calories yesterday. So I should have lost four pounds already. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But 
you may have eaten 1200 calories. And by, and by the way, I don't teach people to count calories, but this is how dieters think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I only ate 1200 calories, but um, I also slept three and a half hours last night because I was pissed off at my husband and I was up really late putting out a fire with my business. So basically your body was under stress all night. Your cortisol levels were, were raised. Yeah. yeah. You think that you're supposed to lose weight because you're counting chickens. You're yes. counting calories instead exactly. of looking at like exactly. you get a good night's rest. That also contributes to your weight. Completely. It's very similar in that respect, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it's looking at the whole picture for sure. Yeah. So I'm wondering if someone is in debt, given mm -hmm. all that you learned from that experience of going through the very restrictive debt repayment process, and yes, it worked. And it sounds like actually it worked quite fast, although that's my label I would put on it for 236K being paid off in two years. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who might be in a similar state of stress, even if the number is not that great, but they may not have the income. So the ratio might actually feel very similar in terms mm -hmm. of how, you know, how big that debt might feel. What would you say to someone, how to get out yeah. of Yeah, so two things. When I paid off the debt before in 2012, 236K in two years, I was, like I had two corporate jobs. I was a contractor, I literally had one computer for this one company here and then the other computer for this company here. And I was like working both projects. So I mm -hmm. made a lot of money very quickly. And Dave Ramsey's theory is like, you just throw all of your extra cash at the debt. And that's yes. how I was able to pay it off so quickly. I didn't like buy new shoes. I didn't like go on vacation. Everything stayed the same. And I just took all of that cash and I threw it at the debt. Because I had a regular paycheck coming in. When you're an entrepreneur and you don't have regular sales coming in and you don't know your, your income is variable and mm. inconsistent. And it's like, I don't want to like throw all this. I don't want to take the 45. I made 45K. Am I going to take half of it and throw it at debt? Mm. No, because I need to save it. Like some of it. I need to like do some other things with it. Mm. So Gina's philosophy is. Um, she calls it the cash flow waterfall and not to like go all into her strategy. Just go look mm -hmm. her up if mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur, but it's a different mindset around handling debt. Like debt is not a problem for your business. You want to just keep paying on the debt and focus on creating more, right? Work yeah. those manifestation skills yeah. to create more cash. And when you have the cash coming in, you now have a place to allocate the money that makes sense for your lifestyle, your business, your family, and all the things. Love it. Love it. Yeah. You That's become unbothered by carrying debt. Sorry, you go. What was that? You become unbothered by carrying debt for a period of time. So it's not like I'm going to carry this debt forever. You have a plan to pay it off over time. Absolutely. Yeah. Similar to some of the other teachers that I've come across in this realm as well, like having those automatic payments set up, perhaps, or like figuring out what that might plan might be, and then just kind of setting it and forgetting it and knowing it's taken care of as long as you know that you've got that regular income to make those mm -hmm. payments, or you just chuck a bit more at it when you can, but then exactly. focus is the abundance, not too much focus on the debt and the lack so that you create more of the abundance coming in. Yeah. yeah. And when you decide, she calls it one click, pay off or something to pay off the debt in a larger sum you do it from a place of like abundance yes you do it from a place of a versus like oh my god I don't like I hate debt debt is the devil and like you're throwing it you're throwing money at it it from a very a negative energetic space that's not what you want to do mm -mm. absolutely I like to think of debt sometimes as it's just money that, you know, we're just paying a little bit extra for actually mm -hmm. it sometimes allows us quite a lot of leverage. So, you yeah. know, we, we get to choose how we want to think about it. Mm -hmm. And even if it was bad consumer debt, we can always come to a different mindset around that and then work towards, you know, paying that off in a, in a way that makes sense to us. Yeah. 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 It's like we have to create our new story around debt, just like we have to create a new story around weight and body image, right? The diet industry has like served up all of these unuseful thoughts about how women are supposed to look in society and what size we're supposed to be and how big our boobs are supposed to be. And like, we have all of this baggage 
Mm -hmm. what we've been exposed to growing up about our bodies, our image, our relationship with food. And so we got to, you have to unravel all of that stuff and decide what you want to believe about eating a cheeseburger. Yeah. Like, are you going to forever, never, ever have a cheeseburger because you think it's bad? Or are you going to learn how to enjoy a cheeseburger and eat for the pleasure of it mm-hmm. versus like, oh my God, if I eat this, I'm going to blow up. It's a difference. Exactly. It's a difference. Same good. thing with the money. See how I love talking about this? I know. It's such a fascinating topic. I love it. One more question I have for you. And yeah. because you've been on such a huge journey with your business, and I think you must have learned so much about, you know, the initial launch from, you know, having two different um, kind of jobs effectively at one mm-hmm. time, becoming an entrepreneur, becoming a six-figure entrepreneur, and then finding that, you know, that the money wasn't really working in that business model, changing it. What would you say to someone who is not quite there at the stage you are yet, where mm-hmm. you're moving into, you know, multi six figure now, you've got your established program, you know how you love to work, you've got your community. So what mm-hmm. would you say to people that are a little bit behind you who are still trying to figure all of this stuff out? Like, what have you learned? Mm, it always starts with your mindset. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when I have a problem or something that I perceive as a problem, I've always been one to like, even before I became a coach, I would always, I was a voracious reader. I was always in the personal development. I was always trying to figure out like, how can I solve this problem by changing something here? This is before I knew the model or any of that stuff. Mm. So now as an entrepreneur, I've just gotten really good at diagnosing what the problem is. So when you look at your situation for someone who's new, take your emotions out of your perceived problem Mm. and look at your facts. What are the facts? What what is the data? Like how much money are you making? How much money do you want to make? How much money is going out? What is the problem? Is the problem that you and your spouse and your partner are not on the same page and they're overspending or you're overspending? Mm -hmm. Is a problem actually like you need to turn off your Amazon Prime membership? Like what is the problem? (laughs) I feel like you're talking to yeah me a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon is you know they're 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 designed. Mm -hmm. If you're on the internet like we are most of the day, like these ads and things that pop up, like it is designed to subconsciously tell you like you need to buy, 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 buy. Totally. So being one of that. (laughs) Yeah. So the main thing for you is the data driven data-driven decisions, separate out the emotions from the facts, and then get your your mind clear, get your mind straight so that you can move forward. And find the help that targets the true problem. Mm. Don't Mm. judge yourself for the emotions. You may feel like a failure. You may feel uh, incapable of handling money. You may feel scared. Mm. Don't judge yourself from your emotions to say, okay, yep, I acknowledge this is how I'm feeling. Here are the facts of my situation. I got this much money in debt. My credit score is this. I want to do this. Like, where is the gap? And then like diagnose, okay, where can I go to get support for this problem? Yes. Knowing it's your mindset change first. Don't like go follow some action program. Like absolutely. Absolutely. Eight dollars a day, every day for the rest of your life. Oh, I've got a whole catalog of courses from years ago when I was trying to do that before I discovered mindset work. Yeah, Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. So many good, um, you know, insights and tips and wisdom here. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. I just share one thing, one other thing to piggyback on the last question. Mm. Find a coach, right? Find a coach that's focused on mindset to support you because you've Mm got to learn a different way to think. If yeah. you want to change your result, you've got to learn a different way to think. Right now, you don't know how to think differently. If you did, you wouldn't be in the situation that you are. So you need to work with a coach, whether that's a one-on-one coach or a group program. Like Get yourself in a container um, where you can learn different ways of thinking. Now I'm like in a container where I'm learning from coaches who are making lots of money yeah. and how they handle wealth. I'm beginning to build this mindset of like, becoming a wealthy person yes 
their thoughts are not different from the ones I have now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Get yourself in a room where people are thinking differently than you are and they're thinking in the where, where you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to pair that with all of the teachings around manifestation, it just opens it up. It, this is where you get to clear the limiting beliefs. You get to clear out all the gunk in your mind that is essentially stopping you. If you're trying to use the law of attraction and manifestation principles, you need to get your brain on board with that. And that's when things can really open up. So yeah, mm -hmm. coaching is just amazing. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. So if anyone's curious about what you do and they're curious about your Stop Dieting Forever program and process, where would they find more about you? My home on the internet is jenniferdent.com. <laughs> I have a podcast. If you're like interested to hear my weight loss strategies and how I think about weight loss, you can listen to the podcast called Stop Dieting Forever. But I have a group program and uh, we open periodically throughout the year. Sign up for my, for my free newsletter, Food Freedom. Get your name on the list and you'll find out when the group opens. But I also do have space for one-on-one -on -one clients that you can apply for as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. This is fun. Absolutely.